Today I'm super excited to share with you some organizational tips and tricks that I use to keep myself organized in my craft space. Things that I can do to kind of get ahead of some of the mundane craft things we do. Things that we're going to use all the time. So I'm going to show you how I store some of my things, some of the things I purchase, some of the things I organize. So let's get to that. I'm Jen and thanks for joining me today in this fantastic journey. Okay, so first I'm going to show you a few little organizational tips. These are how I keep my metal dies. These are just some magnetic pieces and one side is magnetic, the other isn't. And I put them in these little plastic envelopes and they have a Velcro close. Some of them I added the Velcro myself and these ones have a magnetic strip. And then some I don't need them for, some I need a full sheet. So it just depends on how intricate the dies are. I do the same for my sentiments and then also for some of my just die shapes. And those work out really well for me. And I'm gonna show you later what I put on the back side of those envelopes. Next, I wanna show you how I organize my stamps. These are all little plastic bins. I get these bin holders and bins from Hobby Lobby in the United States. They're very inexpensive, like $3 for a bin when they go on sale. And this said bees, butterflies, and dragonflies. And so that's all you'll find in here. And I cut them all up. So I couldn't tell you really where the stamp sets come from. These are also cardboard cutouts. So I keep those also in these little plastic bins. And then I just use my label maker and make some labels. This one says ducks, heads, hogs, bunnies, birds, and frogs. So that's all you'll find in there. So it really just helps me stay organized if I'm looking for something these are my numbers and some of them have large amounts of stamps. Some of them have like this set is just one. So that is one of my ones that are totally full. I've got three of these big like suitcases full of these plastic things and they come in different colors. This is one that I have that's almost not full at all. And then my last one is the very first one I ever got. It's mostly clear bins and they're mostly sayings. So this one is small sayings. And so you'll see that all the sayings in there are small. I have medium, I have birthday sayings, I have long ones, this one, these are my thanks sayings. So all the sayings in here would be related to thanks. And so you won't see those kinds of stamps in the saying small and sayings meeting. This is my love sayings. A lot of these are Valentine's Day, but they're all related to love. So I can look in here and I'll show you later that I organize a book that shows me what's in each one if I don't want to flip through them all like that. So three bins of this kind keep me very organized. This is my put away. These two are my put away bins. I have a thin chamois, it's a craft chamois, and this I just label it put away. And I've got two metallic strips on either side so that I can throw dies in there and they're not gonna get lost or fall out. On this side I have the thicker chamois, so that just stays in there. They're all wet. I start off my crafting session by make sure, making sure that they're all wet. And I'm gonna show you if I had a stamp on here, I would move it from one chamois to the scrubber, to the wet chamois, to then a dry rag. So that's how I clean my stamps if they're on a, a clear block. If they're not on a clear block, then I use, I take the chamois out and use it. This is a smooth, Bristol smooth paper pack. When I get paper packs, I tend to take some out and cut them down into sizes so that I have workable sizes. Because this is something I'll use for blending, ink blending, and anything that would need a smooth surface, I'm gonna take a few pages out and I'm gonna cut these down significantly because these would most likely be just card faces. I'm going to take out my paper trimmer and I'm just going to cut this in half to start off with. So these were 12 inches long so I'm going to cut this in half to 6 inches and then I'm measuring it on the other way. I think they were 12 by 9 so I'm going to cut this to four and a half and so then I'll have six by four and a half card bases. I wouldn't do anything bigger than that so they're a perfect size and I do this with just a small number of sheets just to keep me going for a few weeks. I do a lot of card crafting, so this will keep me busy for a few weeks, and then I can do it again. On rainy days, I like to do these kinds of things where I'm just gonna cut down some things. It makes life a little bit easier. And then I have this bin that says acetate, vellum, and 
card fronts. And if you watched my craft room renovation, you know that these bins are where I keep most of my craft supplies. And so you'll see that I have vellum and card fronts in here. And those are just plain white card fronts and some cream ones. <laughs> I've got some vellum in there and some acetate. So I'm going to put a label on there and just consider that to be the bristle smooth. This is how I organize my stamps so that I, if I need some ideas, I can flip through this book. And the saying thanks that I showed you earlier, those are all the stamps that are in there. And it just helps me stay organized. It's not fancy at all. I'm not monetized by anyone. So I just, that's how I keep my stamps. It's just, this is what I do for fun. This is my hobby. And this is how I do use my embossing folders. And then this is how I keep my dies. So I just take photocopies of the dies. I don't actually cut anything out. And that just helps me when I'm needing ideas. These are how I store my embossing folders. So I use this, it's like a bookend, and I use that in the front just so I can push it back. And I usually organize them kind of by size, and some of them are 3D at the back. And so that's just a really easy way for me to flip through. So I don't even use those embossed pieces anymore. And again, for my metal dies, I use the same thing. There's my magnetic strip tape. And these are all my dies and this is how I keep them. If I have something real intricate where I won't remember what the little pieces are for, I do make a photocopy and cut it and put it in the front or cut it from the packaging. Also, these are my card fronts. So I have this cheat sheet that tells me what the card size would be, what the paper size would be, where you'd have to fold it, and what the envelope size would be and what the finished card will look like. And then I have card bases in this bin. And it's just a bin I keep at the bottom of my shelving unit. And it all has all the different sizes. And then I have the same thing with envelopes. So these are my, all my envelopes and all the different sizes. Then I have an envelope maker. I also have a video I put out. So these are the envelopes. Envelopes I hand make and I usually do that per card uh, but I did have a couple extras when I was making a video about it. Then I wanted to show you that this is a, something new that I've been doing. I don't love to stamp. I'm not very good at it and so I bought this whole stamp piece and it's you know they're it's all one big huge stamp and then you set it on your stamping platform or if you have a really big acrylic block you could put an acrylic block but I'm going to use my stamping platform because I want to do it multiple times and then you can see that the die set is exactly in the exact same shape as the stamp itself the silicone stamp and then I'm going to use my memento ink it's a really nice ink comes out very crisp for me so because I'm not a great stamper and I don't love to stamp. Memento makes my life pretty easy. It's a great stamp to use for sentiments. It needs to be re-inked so I'm using a lot of force to get color on here and you'll see I have to stamp this a couple of times and I use the bottom of my We Are Memory Keepers stamp press. That's how I know that I've got it the right direction. So as I said this came out okay but I'm gonna re-ink it again and do this a couple of times just to get a really dark image and these are all going to be in black. You can do these in different colors, so you have different colors, but I typically will do this type of thing in black because that's my typical go-to. And here I'm using that chamois that I showed you earlier just to clean that stamp off. Then I just put a new sticky mac on my stamp press, so it kind of warped my paper there a little bit, but that's okay. We're going to cut it down and then we're going to die cut out each of the sentiments with that cool little die set. So I'm going to put this on one of my plates. I'm going to put that die set on top of it, and I will link all of these things below. So this is something that you're like, ooh, wow. Wow, I would love to have something like that. This is off of Amazon, so super easy to get to. So I will include all the links, anything I can find in the description box below. So just click on the dot 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 more and you'll be able to see all these links. So I'm just lining it up and it's got some stars and hearts to help you line it up. And then I'm just going to run this through my Off Nova embossing and die cutting machine moves around quite a bit on my workstation because my workstation is pretty slippery but it does have some nice feet on it so normally I think it wouldn't. Okay and this is another bin that I have where I keep things that I don't use very often including my wax paper and my cling wrap, my fixative spray and extra chamois and baby wipes. And I'm going to take some of this cling wrap and we're going to use that to keep all of these little sentiments because they're nice and little so I don't want to lose them. So we'll separate them all first and I apologize everything's really white so it's a little bit hard to see but I think you'll get the gist of what I'm doing here and I'm just going to 
line them all up on my sticky cling wrap. It's actually press and seal. It's really not cling wrap. It's press and seal. So I keep saying it wrong. You guys know what I mean. Press and seal is sticky where cling wrap is not sticky until you get it on something hard. Definitely want to use press and seal. And so I'm just lining them all up. And that way, when I am looking for a sentiment, all I have to do is pull this out and, and take one off because press and seal is very low tack. So it's very easy to get these sentiments off. You'll see that I, as I move them around, it's super easy. And then when I'm done, I will fold it in half and that way they'll be protected on both sides. And I even take off the little hearts and stars that they use to just help line things up. Might might need them in some project. Okay, this is a different one. It's a little bit harder. It's a lot more involved. These are all nice. They're very nice sentiments, but they don't line up like the other one did. And they're all separate. So you would want to line up the sentiment with the die that coordinates with it. And it's really hard to tell what those are. And I'll show you that later. But for now, I'm going to just break these all apart into each individual die. And then it'll be like a puzzle piece <laughs> later once I stamp them this for us to figure out which dies go with which sentiments that we've stamped. I'm trying not to bend any of these too badly but they all need to come apart. And then I use a pair of snips and I actually got them at the dollar store but any pair of snips would work just to get those sharp pieces that connect them all together to get those off. They don't hurt anything except for sometimes they could hurt you so they don't actually cause a problem too much when you're die cutting but you do want to get those off just so they're out of your way and they don't poke you because they can be pretty sharp. You can also do this with your fingers if you want to like bend it back and forth, bend it back and forth, and then you'll eventually pull it off. You don't really want to do it with your scissors because ruin your scissors. And even I've tried to do it with my craft tweezers and it will also ruin your craft tweezers. So that's why you need a pair of these snips or something similar. And then we will stamp our sentiments and go from there. You get, get rid of all those little metal pieces. Okay, I'm going to take out my stamp press again because I want to make sure that I get a nice dark image. So if I need to do it multiple times, I can do that. And I'm using a scrap piece of paper because I love to use scraps if I can, especially for these kinds of things. Then I end up chickening out thinking I might not have enough room. So I end up using a full sheet. It's okay. I don't feel like a complete failure. I'll use that scrap piece somewhere else for sure, especially today. We're doing a lot of die cutting today. This is a day where I just like to get myself organized and kind of ahead of the game for things like this. Because the dies are all sort of all over the place, it doesn't matter what order I put the stamps in. So I'm just trying to get them all on this stamp press so that I can get them all done. Stamp positioner, depending on what you call these. And then that way I just have all of them on here. I think there's one that I didn't end up getting in. Oh, there was also a graduation one and a retirement one that I didn't do just because I ran out of room on my stamp positioner. But I can always do that another time. It was just, those were two that I didn't think I would need. Graduation season is over really for me. No need for any graduation cards in the next several months. So then I'm going to push these all down and then I'm going to take out that same memento ink. Another good ink to use for this would be Stazon, especially if you're not sure if you're going to put some ink behind it. You'd probably want to use something like Stazon. Memento ink is great, but Stazon, you for sure won't have any problem with it bleeding or bleeding into other colors if you end up coloring this. That did an okay job. I did end up doing it a couple of times over and then I'm getting, I'm just going to clean off this with my chamois and then I end up having to take each one off and try and find it back where it belonged. So I didn't make you watch that part. Again, I'm going to take this off my very sticky mat. It's it's newer so it's very sticky right now. And I, you saw me press down my plate and that's because if I can press at all the center into my workstation, then that means I need to flip it over. And that's just a way to keep your plates from getting warped. I have a video about warped plates and what to do if you have them and a way to prevent them from warping in the future. So a fix and a preventive. And I will link that in the description box below to that video. So now, now comes the puzzle part. So we're gonna try and figure out which one goes with which. And I'll show you how I did a few of these, but I won't make you watch the whole thing because it was actually quite a process. So if I were to choose between the two, I really like how these look because they're die cut out so close to the words and that's kind of a cool look. But the other stamp set that I used where the dies were set with the one big stamp, I think that one took a lot less time. There were some really cute sentiments in there, but you'll see these come out really, really nice. It's just a little bit of prep work. So this is why you'd never want to do this while you're trying to make a card. It's just a lot of work unless you're going to just use one little one, I guess you could do that, but it's still, it's a lot more work than what you're used to. 
So that, that's my other one and then we'll end up doing the same thing here. I'll pop all of these out and see how they look so nice, how they're really die cut close to the words. You'll be able to use different fonts. So that one says you're in my, and it, there's ones that say thoughts, prayers, you know, you can coordinate these with different fonts and different sizes. So it's really kind of a cool little stamp set. It's just, I'm warning you, it's a lot. <laughs> It's got some hugs in there, get well, thank you, birthday. So it's a little of everything. And I never did cut out that be still. So I just cut it with my scissors. So it says like relax and enjoy your special day or birthday or you can so you mix and match these and it's really, really cute. They're very small though. So it would be a small sentiment. So next we're gonna take out some more of that press and seal and we are just going to line these up like we did the other one. And this will be the way that we can see them all very easily and yet they're gonna be protected. They're easy to get to because the press and seal really doesn't have a lot of tack. I'll just be able to flip it open and take the one I want and then fold it back over and use the other ones when I need them. If I was doing this and not on camera, I would probably do multiple sets of this so that I have multiples of these. But for now, we're just gonna show you how we do it. So those are those two sets. Then, because these are new stamp sets, I'm going to put some of my magnetic strips inside of this box. And so they actually adhere. And then I'll put all the little sentiment dies inside like this. And some of them still have the removable tape on them, which is fine. I just reuse that anyway. And then I cut the stamp in half. Oh, it's a good way to organize it. Next, I'm going to show you that when I have things that I use over and over again, like leaves, I tend to cut these out like any greenery that you just use a lot, like your go-to greenery. That's a great thing to die cut out all at once and just make multiples of them. And I do it in white. And the reason why I do it in white is because you can always use a dauber and put some ink on it or use a marker and put some ink on it or even swipe some ink over it with one of your ink pads. There's so many different things that you can do with these, but to start off with them being white is perfect because then you can make it however you want it when you get into a project. But then they're already die cut out for you, so it's kind of saves a step. I pulled out this goldenrod color just so you could see it against my white desk. It's hard to see white die cuts. So here I'm just showing you that I'm just die cutting these and just taking them out, die cutting more, I'm taking them out. So it's just a process that you just make a whole bunch for yourself and then they're there when you need them and then you tend to use them a little bit more too. And I'm just trying to show you that these have a lot of detail but you can't really see it in the camera. Those big ones with the big leaves, they have really pretty detail in the die cut. It had like an embossed look to it. You can do this with some of your dyes that are flowers. You can do it with any of your most used items. So then I'm going to put my dyes all back in the folder, but then I changed my mind and I got one of those full sheets so that I could stick these die cuts in the back. And then here's another set that you often need stuff for your sentiments. And so this is a really pretty one. It does, it cuts out the center and not an actual whole circle. So I'll show you what that looks like in a bit, but these are nice for sentiments. That one in the bottom right is a bit of a problem. I've tried to die cut it out before and it gives me a hard time. So we'll try it one more time and see if it's worthwhile. If not, it might be one of those dies that needs to go away because it doesn't really cut out very well. Okay, so here I'm just gonna pop all those out. We're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna have a bunch of these ready to go. So when we need one of those cute little sentiments to go popped up on another sheet, I can either color these again or I, I, or I don't, or I leave them white and then I could color the sentiment strip or whatever the case may be. Or I can even stamp onto these. So here's where that one die is problem. It just doesn't cut. I buy a lot of my stuff off of Amazon and Hobby Lobby and places like that and sometimes I get them on clearance and then I know why. <laughs> but it's nice to try most of the time they work. So here, this is where I said it cuts out the center. It doesn't cut a circle. So I'm going to have to use a circle die to cut it out. And that was pretty easy. I like this one. I use this one quite a bit because it's really pretty how it's got that little edge to it. So here's all my little cutouts that I did. And again, we will categorize those and put them in the back of that folder. So that'll be perfect. And then this was another die that I did not take out when I was doing this earlier. It also cuts out the inside and not an outside frame. You'll see when I use this one, I just tend to cut it with my scissors and make it into a little frame. And this is cute if you 
want to put multiples on there, you can do lots of cute things with this little one. So I decided to cut a few of those out because I might use those in an upcoming card. So here's where I just cut that frame. You can make it thin, you could make it thick, and it's obviously not perfect because I'm using just my scissors, but here I'm just showing you that you could put those diagonally and do a lot of things with those little shapes. So I'll also put those to the side. So now I've taken out a piece of crinkled up <laughs> shimmer cardstock and I'm going to cut out some sentiments. These are the types of sentiments and you can see I keep the sentiments in here and I always include a sheet of what the sentiments are that are in there. These sentiments are nice because they have a outline like a shadow behind it and you can cut those out or you don't have to cut those out like the celebrate one they're separated so I did separate those from each other but the best wishes I kept those together because I usually always do a the shadow piece. So I'm going to take a piece of my post-it. It's masking tape, but it's just a, it's for masks. It's a low tack tape. I'm just going to be able to get all those little pieces out of the die so that if I use just the outline, I'll have all the things I need. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this best wishes. I'm going to put some of that post-it tape behind it. And that will allow me to pull out the pieces off of the rest of the die and then we'll be able to put those where they go. We'll also have the inside which is really really pretty. But then I can make sure I don't lose all those pieces. It's a little annoying to have all those little pieces and some dies are not that way but these are. So here's that paper that I used. I got it for $2.75. I was so proud of myself. And then this is just a white shimmer of the same type of paper. So I'm going to also make some sentiments out of this one. And that way I'll be able to mix and match. So they'll be able to have some gold and some white. So here, that's what I did here to store them. I'm going to put the white inside of the gold and the gold inside of the white. We'll have some sentiments ready to go. So again, if I was doing this by myself, I would make bunches and bunches of them. If you're going to make bunches, you probably want to do it out of a colors that you'll use a lot like gold and silver and white and black and things like that. Okay next I wanted to show you something I purchased that I thought was a really good purchase. So this is from scrapbook.com and again I will link this below so but I did buy this on scrapbook.com and it's Julie Hickey. She just had some die cuts and it came in that little bag all these little die cuts. I separated them all and I just attached them with some removable tape so very low tack tape and I put it on a piece of copy paper you could put it on a piece of cardstock if you want to. But this is just my removable scotch tape. That way, if I want to use one of them, I just pull it off. The rest of it can stay down. And so it had a lot of really nice sentiments that I'll be able to use. I think it was a really good purchase. These are all from the same little package. I just separated them all. So lots of happy birthday ones. They have them in large size, small size, different fonts, little sentiment strips so lots that I'm going to be able to use. I'm super excited about these. It also said you could foil those as well and these are another couple sets I bought from scrapbook.com so this one has a large birthday sentiment on it. It's not perforated or anything but you would use scissors or you could use your paper trimmer or guillotine trimmer but this birthday one so you could say sending you and then use that big birthday and then wishes or wishing you the best birthday. Have a happy birthday so you could see that it's you're using the dark and the white strip but obviously there's only four of those and there's three sentiment strip in black. There's also your birthday on there so you could just use just the sentiment strips as well. This other one just had lots of different ones in different sizes so congratulations, happy day, bravo, happy for you, cheers to you, wishing you the best. So lots of nice sentiment strips and the ones in black I can't print those myself but these are sentiment strips that I print myself so I just print these off my computer. I pick different fonts in different sizes and they're all on white cardstock which sometimes that doesn't work for me if I'm using like a off-white or a cream paper. I've been able to work around that and either color the background or whatever I need to do but these sentiment strips come in real handy because as I mentioned before I don't love to stamp so if I don't have to I try and get around it. Okay and these are rub-on transfers. They haven't been great to work with. I will include those in the links below but I will warn you they're just a little bit harder to work with than I had hoped. And then these are just some note cards that I've had for a long time when I used to not stamp and so I decided instead of throwing them away I'm going to just trim out some of the words that are embossed in gold. This one says happy so I could always use happy and then put something else on there and then I just kept the backs of the cards. So I cut all the cards apart and figured I could use some of the cards 
backing as different design paper almost. And then these were just happened to be with it. And I wanted to show you these. These just have a, per they're perforated. And so you can pop them out, but I can use my rub on transfer words or any, you could always stamp onto these as well. And it kind of acts as like a little sentiment strip background kind of a thing. So those are some of the things that I do to keep myself organized and some tips and tricks to keep things moving along. I hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed showing this to you. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for joining me today. If you would, please hit the like button if you enjoyed this content. Also, if you would, please subscribe to my channel and I put out two videos per week. Also, you can click the notification bell and it'll let you know every time a new video comes out. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.